the FTP program? Yeah, we've got uh, Rita Jairaj, ma'am, from Stella Meris. Good afternoon, ma'am. Would you like to have a more introduction in the chat box uh, so that we can know from which colleges you are participating? have uh, Dr. Stalin from Erode Arts and Science College. We are live streaming this in our YouTube channel, Vivo CC Watch also. So this is for your kind information so that you can uh, watch it at any time again also. So our official YouTube channel, VOCC Watch, we'd like to subscribe for that channel also. A kind request to all the participants to subscribe for our official channel, VOCC Watch. This uh, FTP program is being live streamed in VOCC Watch. Yes, with Dr. Vijay Kumar, resident professor from AVM Sri Pushpan College. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Sumita Rani from Government Anna Rani Anna Government College. Delighta from Sadakatulapa College. Uh, so uh, one more announcement I would like to have is that uh, we'll be having a validatory session on Sunday by 11 o'clock, by 11, uh, just join us for half an hour uh, so that we can make it into a seven-day FTP program because it will be useful for all the participants for their uh, CAs or whatever. So we thought we can make it into a seven-day FTP program. So it will be useful for all of you. So just join us on Sunday at 11 o'clock for a, a half an hour to 45 minutes program, which so that we validly function with the dictionary address. So we have from Nagapatnam, Dr. Vanita, Dr. Nambi Rajan from Pundi College again. Yeah, same link for the validity. Same link for the validity. And uh, the feedback link will be given on Sunday. Tomorrow's feedback link, Saturday, we don't have a feedback link. The feedback link will be given on the final day, that is Sunday. So participants, please log in on Sunday at 11 uh, a.m. for the validatory function as well as the validity address. And you'll have a feedback link on Sunday. So we have research scholars also here. Varshini Prem Kumari from Urus College. Well, from Chandigarh, Poonam Keshav, Assistant Professor from Punjab University, Chandigarh. So we have uh, Pan India, we have many participants. That's nice. Nice. And thank you so much for logging in. So participants had asked for the PPDs also. So we are making arrangements for getting the PPDs also from the resource persons and soon we'll be sharing them. Uh, it will be put up on the official website of our college. If we are sharing them, we'll inform you. Or otherwise, you can have a look at the, in the YouTube channel, VOCC Watch. We have Mani Meghale, assistant professor from Fatima College. We have Tangarani from Vyasa Arts and Science College. Tengasi, Permal Kalenger. Karnanithi Kormatar, Dr. Parimal from Kalingir Karnanithi Government Arts College, Thirvanamale. So welcome, welcome participants. So we'll be uh, starting shortly. So please bear with us. Just five minutes, we'll wait for the participants. Sindhil Kumar from the Department of Biotechnology, Nehru Arts and Science College. You have Kavita Bharati from Kumbuhar College, Nehru. Maila Dudare, Vitish Kumar, a research scholar from Velu. So, for those who are joined late, uh, we have validatory function on Sunday at 11 a.m. And uh, the link to the 
final and the last session will be posted on Sunday after the validity session. So please be uh, posted or be uh, sure to come into the link. The same link will be followed on Sunday also. So we'll be uh, ending our FTP on Sunday at 11.45 to 12. We have Dr. Ram Kumar from the Department of Zoology School of Applied Sciences, Venkateshwara University, Uttar Pradesh. So nice to see all of you here. So I think we can start. Ma'am, shall we start? Ma'am, Sar is available for us. Yes. Sir? Sir Niranjali? Yeah. Good afternoon, yes, madam. Good afternoon, sir. So, can we start? Yes, ma'am, we'll start. Yeah. yeah. So, wishing you all a wonderful good afternoon for the day five FTP on recent trends in entomology. So, let's begin this session with a silent prayer. Thank you, everyone. Our FTV provides not only knowledge and wisdom, it also nourishes us with experience and expertization in various fields of entomology. As we are entering into our first today of our FTP, we are taking you virtually to the northeastern part of India. Yes, our research person today is from Central Mizoram University. So to formally welcome us all, may I invite Dr. D. Pechi Mutil, Associate Professor, Department of Zoology, B.O. Chidamalam College, to deliver the welcome address and to introduce today's resource person. Hello, ma'am. Good evening. Yes, sir. Kovil, Kulatil, Vidhi Hindra Malayinir, Thirtha Mahindradu. Thirubil, Vidhi Malayinir, Thakkadaya Hindradu. Serum Yedatai Purtazan, Saramu Manamu, Adani Pondrazan, Wahu, Sidambaram Kaluri, Belengi El Kore Naratu, in Nigel Chil, Yenetazan Mula Maha, Overwood, Taramu, Permayim, Yergaradi. Welcome to all. Under the dynamic stewardship of our Honorable Secretary, sir, and under the delightful leadership of our principal, Dr. C. Virabahu, who happens to be our own uh, department staff, we are entering into the fifth day of this great seminar. Yen Mudim Yen Badarakum Yadanal Mudia the Yendarakum Yede Ula Duramdan Yangal the HOD ma'am. We would like to welcome formally our HOD, our dynamic HOD, Dr. D. Ratika ma'am, uh, to this great occasion. We also welcome the great scholar, uh, one of the best in his own field, uh, Yelbagwe on Sulvo, Mulkutu. <coughs> Mul Kutti Vita the Endra Mulla Kurai Sura Puramal, Savarana Yatil Kale Vaiti Vutom in the Padi Maru Lake Putisal Hill in the Kuru Varga. Yedrumara Yenangalak Vedi Hudati, Near Mara Yenangalak Vadi Hudaka Kudi Varan, Yindaki Namedatil Vandrakanda, Serapu Talami Verdana, Namadi Serapu Pechala Rogate, Namadi Serapu Pechala Rogate, in the Nigel Chiki, Guru Swami, Guru Subramani Mavali, Nigel Chiki Varga Varga in the Varavatil, begin the Permidam Kurinum, Permagal Charikin Rog. Manidanaki, Palavadigal Wundu, and the Palavadigal, Serapana Vadi Yendra Yedit, and the Vadigal Yendrakim Sendu Wundrakanda, and the Nigelchi in Odea, organizing secretary, Dr. Gita Mam Avalim, Varga Varga Vendor Varver Kundro, Yengal Turai, Bau Chidamaram Kalur, Yuri, Velengil Turai Sarn, the Perasri, Matam Perasri, Permakalaku, Yene Kaluri Chand, the Inguari is under the Perasri, Matam Perasri, Permakalaku, I scholars. Matumula Mana Mani Virakum, over Varium, Variga Varga Vendre in the Nan Nadil Varavir Kundro. Now we are getting on to, or we are moving on to, introductory uh, introduction of our, our chief guest. Today's resource person. Our today's resource person was born, today's resource person was born on 27th of May, 1964. And yes, he, he has got illustrious education behind him. 
He has done his B.Sc. in double degree. In fact, he has done his B.Sc. in chemistry as well as zoology in M.K. University, followed by his M.Sc. in zoology in Madurai Kamaraj University, and he did his Ph.D. in University of Madras in zoology in the year 1986 to 91. And his professional experience is, you know, I'm matchless. It is amazing to, you know, read all those things. But let me figure out few things. Between 91 and 92, he was a BDF in CSIR Colgate Palmolive, a U.S. project, in fact. Uh, it was done in Loyola College, Chennai. And then in 92 to 94, again, he has worked as PDF that is, um, in a Hamilton Fellow uh, in Germany, in fact. In 94 to 98, he was working for the Art, uh, Research and Development Center, a division of biotechnology in Calcutta. And between 2003 and 2007, he was working for the Department of Entomology and Plant Process uh, Division in Assam. And from 2007 to 2000, uh, till now, he has been working for the Department of Zoology, Mizoram University, Ice Wall, Mizoram. And academic distinctions, awards, you know, if, you, if I am going to read it, I will have to take, you know, hours together. But let me read out a few. Actually, he has got Hamlet Fellowship from Germany in the year. 1992 to 94 and then he was a visiting scientist exchange uh, he was in the visiting science scientist exchange program uh, in the year in the year 1995 and then he has got a business excellence award by international business council on 28th of november 1998 and then he has become a visiting scientist to the t research institute of sri lanka uh, in the year 2005 and uh, he has become an INSA visiting fellow, which is a very, very prestigious one indeed, in the year 2006. And he has become a visiting scientist to the Institute of Chemical Institute at Kyoto University, Kyoto, Japan. And then he has become a UGC visiting fellow. Um, and he, was, he has been serving as UGC visiting fellow between 15 May to 13 June 2008. And then once again, he has, he has mantled the same thing in the year 2009. And then once again in 2010, he, is, um, he was able to get the prestigious UGC Visiting Fellowship. And then he has got a very prestigious award that is Overseas Associateship Award, DBT, which is sponsored by DBT, in fact, in the year 2013. And then he has got FISEC. What is this? Fellowship from International Society of Ecological Communication, Poland, in 2010. All these, all these accomplishments, all these achievements, are owned by one and only Professor Guru Swami Guru Subramanian, who is going to be our resource person today. Welcome, Professor Guru Swami Guru Subramanian, sir. Thank you, sir, for your warm words of welcome. I would now like to hand over the session to the today's resource person, Dr. Guru Swami Guru Subramanian. Sir, the session is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful uh, introduction as well as the welcome address. Uh, in this juncture, it's my bounden duty to uh, thank uh, the convener, coordinator, and organizing secretary and organizing committee members for giving me an opportunity to share my experience in this uh, faculty development program on recent trends in entomology. So with your uh, permission, I would like to share my screen. Yes, sir, you can share your screen. Uh, are you in a position to see my slides? Yes, yes sir. sir, yes, sir. So today, uh, my topic is One Health Approach. where different techniques are there. One is uh, meta barcoding. Number two is meta genomics. And the third one is meta transcriptomics. 
here three techniques by which how we are going to achieve one goal that is one health approach these are all biomarker guided approach so now in hindu paper long time back uh, we are coming to that one health so whenever you are coming to that one health it is a kind of an umbrella where three things are there one is animal plants microbes as a whole we are telling biota then our environment so it is a holistic approach so it is a holistic approach by which how we are going to maintain our environmental health human health as well as our biota health bio organisms health so that is the main approach here so in this approach very important part is here we are going to find out the interactions that is very very important part that's why normally in uh, uh, life science we are telling system biology so this is a kind of a system biology approach it is a holistic approach it is not an horizontal approach holistic way we are going to deal the problem and we are going to find out the solution so here everything depending upon yes where we are living one is our environment and the biological organisms so this way our interactions are there what kind of interactions so how we are going to deal with this with the help of that recent techniques so that is very very important part that's why i already informed about uh, that uh, this is a kind of an umbrella where we are our uh, main objective towards one health approach because now you consider in one health approach very important part is that microbial organisms microbes so microbes beneficial microbes also there pathogenic microbes also there we are all suffering from several diseases whether it is a plant an animal or a human being yes we are all suffering from several diseases but each and every diseases yes everything related with our microbiota that is our recent uh, trend by which we come to a conclusion so that is why under that umbrella we are going to check about our one health so in that our main approach is metagenomic approach then very important part is we are all part of uh, the system but very important part is environment so that is why we are telling eco health so that is very very important uh, part because already uh, in english one saying is there health is last everything is last so that is very very important uh, part so like that whether it is a human being or if it is an animal or any kind of organisms so everything related to environment so if we are, if our environment is good then only we can think about other prosperities so recently yes internationally they have started this one health approach so this is one health and well being that is called ohwb approach so this way here the main approach is we are going to create global capacity to promote as well as giving lot of values towards one health and well being so here lot of uh, many so many countries involved in this particular contributions so already uh, africa america asia europe middle east and oceania yes they are all the, yes they are all together then we are all working together so that way we are connecting each other and 
we are developing this kind of approach so now if you are coming to previously if you are seeing there ecosystem then you are plant animal microbe yes so different types of disciplines are there so that way our research towards yes everything focus towards one thing only but uh, we are not uh, interacting anything because if you are considering our india india yes is abundant with a lot of uh, plant animal and microbial diversity so that is why lot of bio monitoring programs are going on in india so for that our new approach which very important part is biological quality indicators are there we have to find out yes we have to find out that quality indicators by which we can assess the ecosystem or assess the our health whether it may be a plant health or animal health or human health so that is our approach so now if you are coming to that uh, biodiversity because this particular faculty development program they have allotted time only for one hour see here i am not going to tell many things so in a nutshell i have to deliver everything and the title they have given recent advances in entomology see after micro yes insects are playing a major role and insect occupying each and every niche to take anything even different types of uh, uh, life cycle wise yes different types are there metamorphosis wise different types are there and very important part is even feeding habits feeding habits itself different types of uh, uh, categories are there so that is the speciality of uh, the insects thing but still we don't know we have to explore many things with respect to insects so that is the real part so then whenever you are coming to that uh, taxonomy taxonomy totally based upon morphological character normally india is very good in taxonomy that's why one example is your zoological survey of india is there botanical survey of india is there so they are all very famous and a lot of stalwarts they did very good work and they contributed a lot to the scientific community but but today what is the status yes it's a billion dollar question you go and then see zoological survey of india biggest yes just no expertise available you go to botanical survey of india yes experts are not available so that is why now then how we can solve this problem because our whenever you are coming to that biology everything based upon field survey only whenever you want to monitor the ecosystem or plant health or animal health or human health everywhere you see survey method is the thing but problem is whenever you are coming to that uh, taxonomy classical taxonomy it's very expensive and time consuming and it is totally uh, depending upon uh, the experts and another important part is yeah, see this is the recent thing previously we described what is species but uh, now yes that definition is wrong because so many factors determining the term species one is your morphological variations ecotype or biotypes or strains like that or interbreeding capability then your genetics then your environment ecological niche so these four factors playing a major role to determine the species so what definition with respect to our species still yes the interrogation mark whether is it, is it a right definition yes because a lot of 
things we have to do and another important part is whenever you come to <coughs> insects because why i am telling i am showing this slide insects in many countries now see protein deficiency protein deficiency playing a major role so how we are going to meet out the protein yes one way is consumption of insects see that is very very important part so many countries they are consuming insects as food or as a protein source then apart from that yes we are international market yes we are having a lot of meat products meat products are there but the problem is we have to what we are eating is it the right one suppose you are going to any one shopping mall then you are buying one meat product suppose you consider one fish but what you are consuming what we are consuming is it a, that particular fish see billion dollar question because now adulteration everywhere is going on so then how we can sort out this kind of problem then you see here i am showing you that insect larvae so you may think that each one is a different species but it is not like that because this color and pattern everything derived from what type of food that particular insect feeds yes but all are same but whenever you consider taxonomy that is totally depending upon adult characterization only what about uh, the life stages whether it is a young one whether it is a nymph or it is a larva or it is a pupa yes we are not in a position to identify anything especially if you go to wildlife biology wildlife discipline yes poaching so many atrocities going on so how we are going to find out what kind of uh, material it is see that's why i am telling you whenever you go to abroad yeah a lot of tinned food is there see very famous is that uh, tuna fish but the problem is lot of adulterations are there in that tuna fish because tuna fish cost is 15 dollars but whereas but in name in the name of tuna yes they are selling only tilapia tilapia is only 2 dollar where is 15 dollar where is 2 dollar see like that so many meats are there horse meat so many meats are there so international level yes it is a kind of adulteration that's why this is one example of horse meat and this is one way it is meat product then you come to herbal medicine see this is another uh, yes jargon is an another jargon billion dollar yes business because china india brazil yes all are playing a major role but is it a real herbal medicine big interrogation mark lot of adulterations are there so that is why now this kind of adulteration or this kind of species identification we are going to tackle with the technique known as barcoding technique dna barcoding technique see and the another important part is this is your long hand beetle so normally we are uh, across uh, world we are sending all our uh, consignments in wooden crate wooden crate so in that inside wooden crate see this uh, grubs are there, there. so once it is reaching in that particular country yes this is then then it becomes a pest one example is asian long horn beetle yes it is originated from india because of this consignment yes it reached other countries then it becomes yes global pest so then in this kind of stage 
what species it is see because you you go to any airport or uh, seaport quarantine department is there so how they may check that is why we are totally depending upon some kind of molecular approach so that is very very important part and with respect to species identification especially in india we are not giving any importance to species identification because zoological survey of india is there but no one is supporting botanical survey of india is there because we are i am telling there is no scientist yes this is whose fault this is our fault only because we are not giving any weightage for the taxonomist nowadays everything we are going towards molecule we have forgotten all our conventional aspects so that is the problem now going on you can use molecular molecule as a tool only but why you we are get rid of the conventional techniques that is very very important part see with respect to species identification so many things are there see now biggest problem is invasive species invasive biology is there yes you you take fish or insect or plant everywhere yes invasive invasive species are there even honey bees also are invasive species are there then endangered and protected species agricultural pests then uh, disease vector pathogen see everywhere your species identification playing a major role even you take covid 19 sars cov 2 see lot of mutation going on so we are totally depending upon identification without identification yes we cannot do anything but now for to ease that approach we are using genes as a bio indicator so we are using genes as a bio indicator by which we are solving that problem that's all that is the way this meta barcoding or meta genomics or meta transcriptomics techniques evolved now if you are coming to that one is dna rna protein so three macro molecules are there so dna containing lot of information but protein only expression yeah maybe information is there but whether information carried out or not yes that's why we are giving a lot of importance to proteomics whenever you are dealing dna that is we are telling genomics but what is the half life of dna see that's why they have given uh, the statistics in bird bones yes it is 521 years that means your dna is omnipresent everywhere it is there you take sweat you take hair or you take a, our secretions skin blood anything you take even sperm everywhere even our fecal matter dna is there so that is why i am telling you so now how yes dna containing information yeah with you if you know if you extract the dna then automatically you can find out what it is so with the help of that meta barcoding techniques yes we can find out so that is why previously yeah, we are telling barcoding then meta barcoding then recent technique is e dna meta barcoding so what first of all we should know what is the meaning of environmental dna e dna e dna means we are extracting dna from the environment what either air or water or soil we are not disturbing any animal or plants or microbes we are yes we are from the debris or it is from air or it is from water or it is from soil or it is from fecal matter we are extracting dna that dna is known as e dna please note this point so e dna may be from your fecal matter or it is from hair or it is from soil or it is from water anywhere 
so that is that's why so your free dna molecule are available everywhere that's why already i told that it is a skin saliva sperm secretion fecal matter urine blood root leaf fruit pollen anything you take yes everywhere your dna is there dna is your signature that's all if i am getting that one i will tell you like horoscope yes what is horoscope that way they are predicting your personality by horoscope they are predicting your future same thing so here dna is a signature yes you give me dna then i will give you i will tell you about whole full details about you or plant or animal so that is very very important thing so whenever you are coming to the dna technique means yes here we are not touching or extracting dna from any animal or any plant or any microbe only from yes environmental material by which we are extracting dna so that is the point uh, this thing that's why now we are telling whenever one is environmental dna another is community dna <coughs> community dna means yes dna derived from many organisms that's all that is called community dna see previously we are going for sanger sequencing see now lot of outsourcing companies are there you are all faculty members you may say that i don't have that facility this facility we you don't need any facility yes you no need any facility only thing is your very important part is your work your plan you have to apply projects then get projects then yes you can do anything through outsourcing you can do many things See, this is your Sanger sequencing. The basic principle is capillary electrophoresis. See, please remember that thing. In that uh, Sanger sequencing, yeah, what is the basic principle? See, normally we are using DNTP. DNTP we are using. This is the structure. So here, in that third position, OH, we are removing that oxygen. That is called di-deoxynucleotide. That's all. So whenever you are synthesizing the dna that time yes this di deoxy nucleotide comes yes that chain is terminated that time your reaction is stopped this is the basic principle yes sanger yes developed that thing so now in 1980s it is very famous of uh, that uh, sanger sequencing so that is very very important uh, part and previously we did manual manual way but now by using fluorescence tag fluorescence tag because now dna containing four base pairs only so green color represent adenine black color represent guanine red color represents thymidine and uh, your blue color is cytosine see this four color that's all that's why we are telling barcode this four color by which so machine reads all the things so automatically we are doing all the things that's all you isolate dna then you can amplify by using pcr polymerase chain reaction then afterwards you send it to sequencing whether neck sanger sequencing or Next generation sequencing or high throughput sequencing. Yes, that is the matter is there. So that part I am going to discuss here. So whenever in Sanger sequencing, you are targeting only one gene. Yes. You can target only one gene and only one sample. But whenever you are coming to that high throughput sequencing or next generation sequencing, yes, here parallelly you are sequencing millions of dna fragments please remember that that is the basic difference between sanger sequencing and next generation sequencing In, whenever you are using the term next generation sequencing yes you are sequencing millions of uh, your dna fragments 
parallelly so at one stretch you will get all the thing but in sanger sequencing yes you may get only one one so that is the basic difference between high throughput sequencing and sanger sequencing see previously because this is the matrix previously in sanger sequencing we are using 96 well plate but now in illumina in uh, higher, next generation sequencing see it comes to a slide see that's all in this slide yes i place all my dna and i am detecting all the thing i am doing sequencing so this is the technology updation so in that next generation sequencing yeah first one is pyro sequencing so pyro sequencing totally based basic principle is yes whenever yes you are uh, pyro phosphate dna is there then you are adding dnt dntp so that way atp is generating aps that is adenosine phosphosulfate so because of that what is happening yes it is you, you are generating the light with the help of the enzyme luciferase so this luciferase enzyme converting luciferin into oxyluciferin that's all same same you have seen that uh, glowing sex same principle here we are using in pyro sequencing so based upon the light signal we are doing that sequencing so one one example is 454 roach pyro sequencing because this roach company developed this technique but this are all obsolete old because like information technology yes in this sequencing technology also so many updation are coming these are all old technique 454 pyro sequencing nowadays no one is doing then bisulfite sequencing yeah this is very very important part who are all working on methylated dna if you want to detect methylation in dna then you have to use bisulfite sequencing only this is a very good technique bisulfite sequencing is for you have to find out methylated dna because methylated dna means yes no one there is no access see now we are talking about antibiotic resistant yes antibiotic resistance we are talking yes why totally because because of that methylation only because your dna is methylated that's why whatever your active compound whenever acting on that receptor it is not recognizing there is no recognition so that one year. then in continuation of that ion torrent sequencing this is another next generation sequencing so this is totally based upon deduction of hydrogen ions that is released during polymerization of your dna that is the basic principle of ion torrent this also obsolete that's gone then solid sequencing that means you take dna cut into many pieces then wherever matching sequences are there that thing you can ligate with the dna ligase so that technique is another next generation sequencing solid sequencing this also yes obsolete then now illumina sequencing because illumina company is doing one is high sequence yes this is your latest trend high sequence then my sequence then true sequence mini sequence these are all different kind of platforms sequencing platforms by which yes you can get output more that's all because these are all same all illumina sequencing are all same whether it is high sequencing or my sequencing or mini sequencing all are same but that way what is your read length that is very very important part that's why because how many reads you are getting so then only i can do analysis because read length playing a major role because you are getting the read read means what sequences so in that sequences then you are going to by using bioinformatic tool you are going to analyze so many dead thing so read is very very important part so that's why we are using different different technique but in all that high throughput sequencing whatever i told that is pyro sequencing or uh, your uh, 
mini sequencing high sequencing ion torrent sequencing yeah, whatever sequence you take here we are using totally depending upon primer yes primer dependent then you may ask sir what is primer because here you are doing sequence so if you want to start the sequence because you are targeting a particular gene but our system our system whether it is a plant animal or microbe containing several genes n number of genes so some element should go and then find out oh this is my gene yes how will you find out yes with the help of the primer please remember that thing primer is a oligonucleotide short sequence primer purpose is to find out our gene of interest what is my gene it has to go on and bind then only yes your polymerization will take place dna sequencing will take place please remember that uh, uh, point but now fourth generation uh, technology sequencing technology that is called the minion that is called the nanopore sequencing this is primer free primer free see this is your sequencing component that's all you want only one laptop so you go anywhere else that's all extract dna then load it finish then you can do sequencing so how it is detecting uh, that uh, base pair totally based upon ph ionization ion current based upon that it is identifying that four base pairs but this is primer free please remember that thing nanopore sequencing and read length also more yes read length is very high in minium this nanopore sequencing but previously whatever i told ion torrent sequencing solid sequencing pyro sequencing illumina sequencing where yes read length is very less so you see total output is 6 gb per day see see you you because you you if you, you want to do high throughput sequencing you have to have a very good instrumentation facility but with respect to nanopore sequencing you no need to do anything only that's all this is a small equipment that's all you have to buy this cost around 2 lakhs that's all so you can load the dna then uh, automatically yes it will do sequencing yes then you can get the sequence then you can do whatever analysis so that's why we are telling shotgun sequencing so what is the meaning of shotgun sequencing that is pcr free please note this point pcr free shotgun sequencing because all other thing yes we are using primer dependent so whenever you are doing primer dependent means you have to do pcr polymerase chain reaction but here pcr free shotgun sequencing so nanopore sequencing is an example for shotgun sequencing what is the meaning of shotgun sequencing yeah very simple your dna is very large molecule so you cut into many pieces that's all then after that you reassemble with the help of the software that is called shotgun sequence okay so now you see very important part is who are all new to this field see don't think that uh, oh i don't know anything it's not like that anyone can do only thing is your interest and another important part is we you are all faculty members so you should motivate our students to do all these things recent techniques because problem is see ugc giving lot of pressure for employability please remember that's why new education policy new education policy is passed so their prime aim is employability that is very very important part so if you want to employability then now yes if you are doing only conventional thing so i know only this conventional technique if you are following then you you may not get any job you are spoiling yourself and you are spoiling future generation also so that's why please switch over to
current technology that is that's why updation is very very important part how you are adapting to the environment already charles darwin is yes, long time back he told so that is your fitness yes so your fitness is totally depending upon how you whether you are intelligent no matter intelligent is not at all a playing a role here how you fit with the current trend then you are a successful person so now why i am telling this yes because whenever you are coming to this kind of sequencing technology you are totally depending upon bioinformatic tool that is why computational knowledge is very very important thing lot of information technology star there but they don't know biology that is a problem we only know biology so that is why now it is our bounden duty to learn computational techniques or it may whatever the research you are doing whether you are working in microbe or whether you are working in plant or whether you are working in animal or you are working in on human being first learn computational tech lot of training programs are there you attend 10 15 then you will become master or otherwise lot of youtube is there see my students yes they are learning by themselves than they are doing only yes i am here to motivate my students see our strength is our students please note this point because faculty development program is just giving lecture and go it is not like that transformation of your mind that is very very important thing because nowadays among faculty members yes there is no josh in hindi we are telling josh that means there is no enthusiasm please that's why you don't have enthusiasm that is uh, yes forget about that but think about your future generation that is very very important uh, thing that's why you have to learn about several databases are there so with respect to dna three databases it is very very important thing one is european molecular biology laboratory embl gen bank that is ncbi then uh, ddbj dna data bank of japan yes everything is available only thing is you have to give some attention it's not a thing so now i am coming to that barcoding technology because you go to any mall yeah you you are buying several items see their barcode is there so barcode country wise barcode is there but i am talking about universal uh, product code so that is containing 11 variable positions so 10 possible numbers are there so that way the machine is detecting what is the price of that particular item same technique we are following in dna barcoding see there are four base pairs are there atgc yes we are giving four different colors so accordingly yes we are preparing our barcode of that particular species then we are depositing in the database so very good database is bold database you see i will show you now are you in a position to see my screen hello yes sir we are able to see your screen yeah Okay, I am not. Uh, so many windows are there. Mm. Okay, you see, very important. Okay, I would like to show uh, a live thing. No problem. You can go to Google, type NCBI. Mm. That is one database is there. Then another database is Bold database. B O L D. Bold. You type Bold. Yes, sir. And you will get. and they are that is self explanatory they are giving lot of training on barcoding barcoding of life yes it is based on uh, canada so you can register yourself they are giving training and uh, they see even they are giving training to the faculty members they are giving training to the students and they are yes only thing is you you should apply you apply yes then you can go to canada then you can get the training yes only thing is yeah you should know but most of our students are faculty members they are not utilizing this opportunity that is a problem so whenever you are coming to that barcoding yeah 
what is the basic principle uh, involved in uh, that uh, barcoding you see you take we here we want any type of sample sample may be a fecal matter or sample may be your blood or tissue anything hair secretion anything or urine anything is was all containing all sample containing dna so what we have to do you have to extract dna see now lot of kits are available yeah only thing is you have to have a plan so then extract your dna then your this is your pcr machine see even if you don't have any facility no problem because pcr machine is only 2 lakhs rupees yeah in thermo fisher it is 2 lakh and this gel electrophoresis yeah, with the power pack it will come around 50000 rupees and this see even if you don't have anything yes see per sample they are charging 2500 rupees yeah only you have to send this sample to outsourcing agencies then they will give the sequence then you can submit then you can do what kind of analysis but here basic principle in dna barcoding is extract dna amplify with pcr then check your your dna whether dna amplified is only your gene of interest check with electro agarose gel electrophoresis then you can send it for sanger sequencing this is simple technique old technique then yes see automatically you will get the sequence then in board database yes then then you can generate the barcode see this way you are generating barcode then yes whatever species everything is there so this is the you are doing service to the scientific community so previously based upon character we have done the taxonomy later only base pairs now with the help of barcode easily you can find out that's all because in all barcoding what is your gene of gene target that is very very important thing for animals from protozoa to mammalia yeah our target gene is cytochrome oxidase 1 because this cytochrome oxidase 1 is present in the mitochondrial genome because three types of genome is there one is nuclear genome mitochondrial genome then your chloroplast genome those who are all working on plants they have to target chloroplast genome so mitochondrial genome then nuclear genome so what you take databases whatever information available everything based upon nuclear genome only that's why we are telling genome project so genome pro project targeting nuclear genome only so if you want to do mitochondrial genome then you have to specifically you have to mention so cytochrome oxidase 1 is from mitochondrial genome always you remember this is for all animal this is kind of signature id that way with the help of this target gene yes i can identify from protozoan to mammalia any whatever species i can identify so that is very very important part because in mitochondrial genome there are 13 protein coding genes are there but here we are targeting co1 so it's a kind of a master key anything any blood stain or sperm or secretions or saliva if you extract dna then you know what life it is yes so cost is only 2500 rupees yes this is for anim then those who are working on plants what they will do yes their gene target is different they don't go for co1 co1 is only for animals then if you are working on plants then you have to go for mat k rbcl then psba trmh and its this four thing normally is yes, all over the world they are using you have to standardize because its is nuclear non coding a psb a trnh and mat k that is plastid non coding then rbcl is plastid coding so like that 
you have to know what is your gene target based upon that you are identifying the species here not only you are identifying the species yes you can identify the contamination adulteration that's why i told in uh, in the world market they in the, in the name of tuna they are selling tilapia so with the help of this barcoding technique see this is your chromatogram atgc chromatogram is there see this is the, the peak and uh, respective uh, base pairs are there but you see here any contamination is there any sample is mixed then you will get overlapping so any overlap because you are you are should be very clean neat and clean that kind of peak should be there but if there any overlapping is there then you can say it is a contamination then you can find out what species it is same thing for your herbal medicine see now herbal medicine they are making a barcode yes internationally yeah, you can go and check it then you know this is this see they are giving qr code this is called a qr code that's why right. see here here they are giving so what marker is for what uh, species mat k for flowering plants rbcl for seed plants its2 for medicinal plants psb atr and h for medicinal plants so like that they are giving all these things okay then same way you are doing that uh, ecosystem monitoring okay so now in that barcode technique we are using its for fungi for plants we are using rbcl and uh, matk or trn uh, psb eh? then the co1 is for animal so that part you know this is single specimen and the single gene targeting this is barcoding but whenever you are coming to meta barcoding yes multiple species because you are mixing all dna soup you are preparing a dna soup mixed dna sample community dna then you are targeting you are identifying that thing that technique is known as meta barcoding yes so whenever you are using the term meta barcoding it is totally depending upon high throughput sequencing okay now you know what is meta barcoding okay whenever you are using meta meta means mixture several yes so meta genome mixture of gene that's all that is so we are telling meta analysis because large meta means yes huge large that's why we are telling meta analysis see you, you one scientific journal is there that is called a lancet so if you want to publish lancet your publication in lancet you have to have a meta data meta analysis data that is called big genome big data your meta is big data so several data you have to do then only you can publish in that lancet uh, uh, journal so impact factor is Uh, that is sixty. So, what is meta genome? You may ask that thing. See, normally this meta genome we are using for microbial part. So, lot of microbes are there. So, you you take animal or pl uh, plant. everywhere gut microbiome is there surface microbiome is there soil microbiome is there everywhere microbes are there so that's why and whenever you are uh, culturing the microbe yeah only 1% 1% you can cultivate with the help of that media but other than that yes you can very difficult to find out that's why we are using this meta genomic approach So here, gold standard is 16 years RRNA. Please note this point. It's a universal marker. Universal marker, 16 years RRNA. That is your gene target. Okay. So that is very very important part. See, previously we target whole gene, but based upon that updation of the technology, what we are doing nowadays, we are going for variable, hyper variable region across microbes. hyper variable region v1 to v9 is there see this particular slide showing v1 to v9 so very important part is yes see 
for our uh, gut suppose if you are working on gut microbiome of insects or animal or plant anything we are normally we are targeting v3 v4 region v3 v4 region we are targeting yes there most of the thing you will get uh, that thing okay so in that okay see here two term is there one is metagenomic read read then another is you are targeting a particular gene you are amplifying a particular gene that is 16s rna from the metagenome then what is the difference between your uh, amplification of uh, that particular gene target and your read see whenever with the help of that read you can check the function of functional activities that is called functional genomics that is called functional genomics but uh, whereas whenever you are targeting a particular gene target then you are doing and that is called only taxonomic part classical taxonomy what microbes are there that thing only you can do but uh, whenever you are doing uh, with uh, metagenomic read you can find out uh, apart from microbial diversity you can analyze functional activities also see this are uh, this is overall uh, flow chart about your metagenomic uh, analysis see whether it is a metagenomic analysis or a metatranscriptomic analysis yes see principle is same what you have to do first you have to do shotgun sequence that means break your dna into several pieces that's all you have done then after that what you have to do yes filter unwanted region because uh, uh, my what is my gene of interest yes that thing only i have to filter so here you are filtering unwanted thing that is called low quality region okay low quality region you have to so that that process is known as denicing so, so several bioinformatic tools are there to filter out low quality region then after that what you have to do you have to do assembly yes you have to assemble your reeds raw reeds then after that you have to do binning binning means you are categorizing bin binning means categorization so in that thing very important part is one is that operational taxonomy unit clustering yeah because see what species it is because one is finding the species another is finding the number as well as the abundance so that that process is known as otu cluster operational taxonomic unit cluster there are also lot of tools are there that's why go through that part then uh, because because of paucity of time already i have crossed my time but uh, i will try to finish uh, within uh, uh, 10 15 minutes so after that you can do that taxonomic classifications so binning is very very good so binning means you are doing categorization please remember because once if you are doing binning then only you can go for functional activities what are what is the function of that particular uh, thing you can find out for that you are doing binning so please remember all these things so that is very very important part mm -hmm. yes already i have uh, mentioned about uh, this thing because this term metagenomics first used by handelsman john clardy and robert goodman so you should know all these things because history of science very very important part and why we are giving so much importance to metagenomics you may ask that question yes because in metagenomics you can find out novel product novel antibiotics new molecules with new functions new enzymes and bioactive molecule yes and what is the interplay between your microbes and uh, organism yes this way you can analyze that's why we are giving so much importance to metagenomics that's why you you can take anything whether it is a soil or a sediment or human gut anything or carcass fecal matter anything you can take 
whether it is a microorganism anything yes whether it is a water air soil anything but in metagenomic above three things are there one is genetic another is taxonomic and third one is functional so three things are there in metagenomic but that's why here two approaches there one is sequence driven whenever you are telling about sequence driven we are targeting only the gene that's all what kind of genes are there that's why we are uh, talking about sequence driven but whenever you are talking about function driven yes what genes are doing the role so two approaches there that's why sequence driven approach functional driven approach yes that way you have to because this this is everything because after getting read all our computational analysis that's why you are very good in computational analysis yes because it, it will take some time that's why step wise you have to go but it will take long time but it is possible it is possible okay All right so you can see here a lot of uh, that's why um, this computational things are there. the only one database is kind database so there you can see alpha diversity beta diversity see normally you know in, in conventional thing we are doing alpha diversity beta diversity gamma diversity but now we are doing with the help of read sequence with the help of that sequence you can do alpha diversity beta diversity everything <coughs> okay then you may see this kind of heat map see heat map is nothing but representation of your data with respect to different colors so this color is showing some kind of scale so that way you know the relative abundance that's all relative abundance how much relative abundance is there or quantity is there we are represent is a is a graphical representation that is known as heat map please remember that thing so now with respect to dna barcoding dna meta barcoding and e dna meta barcoding yeah what is the difference see this slide very nice slide this is prepared by tabernet et al 2012 yeah, you check this paper fantastic paper see whenever you go to uh, dna barcoding yes single specimen single gene that's all that is dna barcoding but whenever you are talking about dna meta barcoding yes single gene but multiple specimen bulk sample but whenever you are coming to e dna meta barcoding e dna meta barcoding yes here you are not targeting any specimen you are targeting only the environmental sample from where you are this is also bulk sample yeah but you are identifying the species or their functional annotations so please that's why very important part is you are using the your gene target yeah what is your gene target see lot of references are there see 16s rrna is there so for bacteria archaea they are using 16s rrna and what kind of databases are there see rdp green genes silva then fungi means its only they are gen bank bold unite sometimes you have to use 18s also silva then whenever you are working on protista then 18s its co1 three gene target you have to select then their respective databases silva gen bank bold like that then whenever you are coming to the animal yes mostly co1 and uh, yes sometimes 16s 18s then whenever you are coming to the plants yes its rbcl matk this is so main thing is gen bank only so this point So now you know what is meta barcoding and meta genomics. Now, if you are coming to the meta transcriptomics, see, see, previously we dealt with DNA, but now we are dealing with RNA. Why we are uh, bothering about RNA? Because whenever you are extracting DNA, RNA, we, you know the activity in that particular cell. What kind of gene expressed in that particular environment? if you know that thing then you have to go for meta transcriptomics approach 
because several types of rna is there n number of uh, things are there but very important part is yes our target is yes very important part is rna involved in protein synthesis yes one is mrna 1 to 5% transfer rna 10 to 15% and ribosomal rna more than 80% see that's why what is your interest rna yes that is very very important part okay and purification of rna see whenever you are working on rna transcriptomics after getting your sample immediately you have to store your sample in rna letter don't forget otherwise you may not get any rna because rna is very unstable even if you are keeping in fridge for more than one month you will not get any rna that is why so you have to be very very careful while handling rna so rna letter you have to store that is very very important part so in that rna protocol very important part is we are using the denaturing agent that is guanidine hcl and guanidium thiocyanate and two reducing agent we are using one is mercaptan ethanol and dithiotheratol please uh, check through google you will get all the information and because in rna you have to remove your dna also your uh, protein also so your protein you are removing by phenol chloroform extraction so here normally we are using trisal so trisal containing all the thing is whatever i told guanidium this thing previous slide i told no guanidium hcl guanidium thiocyanate mercaptan ethanol dithiotheritol everything it is containing in trisal so that is why another important part is whenever you are working on rna isolation ph playing a major role your ph should be 4 then only you will get pure rna your ph should be 6 to 7 then you will make you will get the mixture of dna please note this point we are all working on meta transcriptomics ph 4 you should maintain then only you can maintain your rna quality please this is the thumb rule of these things okay so that is very very important part okay then why we are doing the transcriptome sequencing here three things are there one is see after getting your rna sequence you can do differential gene expression yes what, what is the expression expression pattern you can check then after that you can do meta transcriptome analysis you know, what kind of uh, community whether it is a bacteria whether what uh, role everything you can do it so that is very very important thing. so this is the protocol for your meta genomics meta transcriptomics so extract rna then you can prepare the library then you can do sequencing then you can you will get the read then align the read then you can go for quality checking then you can do statistical analysis so here in data mining that means analysis of the data so many things are there heat map venn diagram annotation enrichment testing so many yes, things are there so that's why you should know all these things but i am telling you everything is possible everything don't say that sir i am working in college uh, my in my college no facility no i'm sorry i am there in mizoram <laughs> i joined in the year 2007 that time i sat under the tree <laughs> but now in 2022 yes all cutting edge technology we are doing meta genomics we are doing meta transcriptomics we only yes our plan vision and mission okay so that is very very important part okay and whenever you see another important part is in this kind of transcriptomics you no need to do anything because a lot of outsourcing the companies are there so per sample <clears throat> they are charging 25000 rupees that's all you will give the sample they will do all the analysis they will give only thing is you should know how to do write a paper how to do analysis that's all okay so here three processes two processes are there only poly a selection and ribosomal depletion 
you are working on eukaryotes then you have to go for poly a selection other than that you have to select ribosomal depletion yes please note this point uh, then yes get that to what what it is poly a selection and ribosomal depletion and here very important part is with respect to that uh, uh, computational approach here so many format is there fast q format see that's why so what you have to do with the help of uh, computational specialist yes because lot of training programs they are giving you attend uh, see iit icer uh, indian institute of uh, science they are conducting 100 on one programs even in swayam portal 100 on one program they are conducting you have to join then you have to know what is what different kind of formats so just i am introducing fast q format that is one thing is there then see in that that is file format then future format is there gtf gff3 then sam bam then ucsc format so file format then future format two thing is very very important thing so you go through that part yes everywhere it is there what is that's a gtf means gene transfer format uh, gtf means gene transfer format that's why gff3 means general feature format 3 p3 so that's why you have to know all these things then as a whole you see very important part is whether you are working on meta barcoding or meta transcriptomic work yes first one is sampling how you are doing sampling that is number one then after that your genetic analysis genetic analysis containing your dna extraction amplification and sequencing yes that thing you should know genetic analysis and the third one is your bioinformatic analysis yes here you have to have very good uh, your support is needed bioinformatic analysis without that you can't do anything because they are only you are doing filtering clustering and assigning and annotation then after that only you are doing ecological analysis because in normal conventional way we are doing only this thing only population diversity community structure diversity this thing that thing we are doing but i am telling you those days are all gone those days are all gone yes you have to add flavor to this ecological analysis via molecules then only you can sustain nowadays otherwise your your work is not recognized by anyone please note this point then another important part is you see in insect sucking insects are there see sucking insect yeah what food it is it is taking no one knows you take chewing insect what uh, we don't know but uh, see if you are collecting fecal matter of that insect yes that's all enough then you can see what kind of diet it is see very good information in insects no one no work has been done no work has been done even in wildlife also yes that's why i am telling you suppose see aquatic insects are there i have seen uh, some uh, they are talking about aquatic insects see why you are catching aquatic insects no need collect a uh, water sample from that you can extract edna then you can find out what kind of aquatic insects are available in that particular aquatic system yes you can do it see they are doing in uh, fish same thing you can do it uh, for insects yeah, any system you can do see now you are coming to the uh, honey bees you see this honey containing pollen grains see honey bee where it go and then collect nectar or pollen grains because it is very difficult study now i am sitting at the lab i will collect only the pure honey that is containing pollen grains that's all with the help of plant barcoding rbcl matk i will find out what plants are there that's why even in honey labeling they are telling this is maduka honey this is himalayan honey containing this thing that thing how they are doing only based upon this thing yes then another important part is earthworm see earthworm communities are there you know the all they are killing 101 earthworm no need collect only soil extract dna 
Yes, then you can find out what kind of earthworms are there. See, in our lab, we are doing metatranscriptome and metagenomics with respect to, just now we have started, Epis darseta and one is stingless bee. Yeah. We, here we are doing organ specific transcriptome profiling. See, we are collecting gut, venom gland, testis, ovary, and brain. Then we are doing all these things. This is your, our meta transcriptomics study. Then meta genomic study, yes, we are targeting V3, V4 region. So that way, how that gut microbiota playing a major role with respect to hygienic behavior of the bees. That thing we are targeting. That's why. Because bee health, bee health can be determined based upon gut microbiome profiling. Yes, what kind of microbes are there? So, because so many pests and uh, pathogens are there in uh, bees. So now we are collecting gut microbiota. Based upon that, I can say whether your gut microbiota, uh, that particular colony is good or bad. I can say. So like that, you can do conservation biology or invasion biology or biomonitoring. Ecology, any n number of field you can do it. This thing. So this is my last slide. So that's why. So I end with Charles Darwin saying, "See whether see you, that's why it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. Very important thing is the most adaptable to change. Yes, that is the fitness mantra. Yes, every." You take any time, this is the mantra. Yes. So, who is adapting according to the environment? Yes. Then only your success is there. So, this is my message to this particular audience. So, in this, through this faculty development program, yes, I would like to share this news because motivate our students. Our students are our strength. You don't say, I don't know. No, please, because nowadays students, they are very intelligent than the teachers. Because see, recently in uh, the VOC college, I attended a, a, a PhD examiner, one thesis of uh, uh, Dr. Geeta. See, that fellow doing nanoparticle, nanoparticle characterization, then this, that. See, that's why in that college, college, see, college, not university. Yeah, they are doing nanoparticle characterization and nanoparticle research they are doing. So that one example is enough. Only thing is you should motivate the students. That is very, very important. So with this note, I end my uh, lecture. Thank you. So now do you have any uh, query, questions? Yes, either you can put it in the chat box. So it is easy for me to answer your queries. Okay. Dear participants, the session is open. It is open for all. If you have any queries, kindly put it on the chat box. The sir is available for us to clarify. Dear participants, do you have any queries? Please type that thing in the chat box. Then it is easy for me to answer your queries. Please. Don't type excellent uh, this thing. I don't want that one. <laughs> I want uh, questions. <laughs> what What is your take home message? Yes, I would like to know. <laughs> See, sir, just, attending, so? just attending uh, session is not good. You have sir. to carry forward this message for your future work. Yes. Somebody has a question, I think. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Evening, sir. Uh, can I, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, actually, without uh, saying this is a truly excellent session and wonderful, um, uh, you have given a, a very good overview about the entire technique related to molecular uh, technique, which can be applied um, recently. And uh, definitely, as you mentioned, we'll follow all the uh, strategies to update our um, uh, through this FTP program, definitely we'll update ourselves. So thereby we can motivate our student also. So that is one part. And related to the techniques, whatever you listed down is really wonderful. But I have one clarification, uh, clarification related to mini ion you have mentioned. So just by um, spending two and a half lakhs, we can buy and we can go for sequencing. That's what you have mentioned. 
but can we use the same uh, that particular uh, slide like thing for so many sample or is it restricted to maybe one or two samples so because uh, we have whatever the amount we are spending like uh, being in a college teacher no getting fun is a very big question mark nowadays so how can we make use of that particular 200 lakhs spending and uh, the way we can utilize that particular instrument for uh, many samples Uh, will you please uh, clarify, sir? Thank you, sir. It's a, it's a very good uh, question. I expected that one. Nicely, yes. Uh, thanks to Dr. Sujata Kabir. Yes. You see, very important part is lot of programs are there for ladies. One is women scientist. How many of you applying for women scientist? DST is there. Department of Science and Technology. so many yes women scientist program is that even now serb core grant is there how many of you are really applying into that yes lot of opportunities are there only thing is you should know that particular information and you have to take some extra mileage because normally as a faculty member what we are thinking okay uh, my job is only 10 to 5 that's all no if you want to establish something you have to come out from your comfort zone yes that is very very important point that is number one and regarding that uh, sequencing yeah regarding sequencing see so many uh, agencies are there one uh, thing because i am not in a position to tell these things in in that open forum that's why i am not mentioning that part but still i am mentioning see one agri genome is there uh, so many companies even in coimbatore so many things are there in kerala kochi <clears throat> even uh, 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 delhi university so many sequencing facilities are available but thing is what kind of analysis it is suppose if you are working on sanger sequencing there you are targeting only one gene everything depending upon base pair suppose if it is below 1000 base pair they are charging only 300 rupees that's all one sample 300 rupees here you have to extract dna then you have to send that sample for that they are charging 350 rupees 300 to 350 rupees single gene sanger sequencing then they will send the details then you can submit to ncbi then you can do whatever analysis do you want that is one thing suppose if you don't have that facility yes then you send only sample see one example is in calcutta that the science innovation is there see during covid time we are not in a position to get uh, uh, chemicals so what we did we sent only that samples to that uh, science innovation they extracted dna then they did uh, pcr then they did uh, sanger sequencing they they sent all the thing so they are charging 2500 rupees per sample but if you are you are having bulk sample if you are sending only one sample they will charge 2500 rupees but the problem is if you are sending around 50 sample 70 sample then they may reduce the cost to 1000 rupees that is totally based upon you are dealing yes that is very very important but how much business you are giving so if you are giving to do too much business then they will reduce the cost so this is with respect to single gene sanger sequencing but whenever you are going for transcriptome see this uh, med genome is there med genome is there okay. uni genome is there uni genome from gujarat and the med genome from bangalore see they are reasonably they are charging per sample they are charging 25000 rupees transcriptome analysis they are charging 25000 rupees but that's why after getting your sample you have to put this thing in rna letter then within 10 days you have to send the sample in dry ice to their place 25000 rupees see in that in return what you are getting they are getting all the data alpha diversity beta diversity venn diagram this that uh, and the pca all analysis you will get only thing is you should know how to analyze the data and how to write a paper and how to write your uh, thesis or project that's all so this is with respect to your transcriptomics then if you are coming to metagenomics suppose if you are working on 16s rrna yes metagenomics v3 v4 region for that 
per sample they are charging 7500 rupees or sometimes they are charging 7000 also this is the part we are doing because we are in remote place yeah sometimes we may do sometimes we, we are not in a position to do so that's why everything we are doing outsourcing then after that uh, yes because here one is uh, performing that sequencing they are very difficult that is one then after that after getting read yeah you should know how to do analysis by using computational techniques yes you have to give lot of attention for that that's why you have to train our my our students because my students while coming they don't know abcd of anything i will give lot of pressure yes you should do this is the work you have to do most of the students they may say sir it is not possible to do this that no you should do then after that yes I, because i am sending those uh, students to several training programs so that way they are learning and successfully they are doing that's why i am telling you see we are in remote northeast india here students they are doing why not in the mainland <laughs> that you may be in a college no problem but the thing is yes you have to arrange your financial resources that is very very important thing so how to get financial resources yes for that uh, yeah you have to work out that's why you have to have lot of collaboration that's why i see even colleges also one teacher good at uh, microbiology or one good at uh, bioinformatics one good at uh, zoology yeah three will collaborate together then you can apply for a crb core grant this 14th april is the last date so you can apply definitely i am telling you yes you may get and apart from that sc st programs are there how many of you getting really availing the thing because uh, because most of the thing are from north india uh, uh, east india or north east india they are availing but i haven't seen anything from south india yes very rare sc st obc so many categories are women scientist so many programs are there but uh, we are not getting enough proposal that's why because so many persons sitting here in this uh, thing yes you are applying definitely we will we will support you yes see our main aim is to support you that's all but uh, for that you should apply now so that is why for financial part yes find out the agency because department of biotechnology is there then see now ugc stride program 1 2 3 component 1 component 2 component 3 are there you have to apply then uh, your uh, icmr proposal see yes, recently yes around a lot of proposal so even from one uh, department four five persons they got it so that is why very important part is you have to find out your financial resources that is number one number two your collaboration because you have to collaborate with uh, experts because, because i know only certain thing only certain part they have to do so that's why here the team work is very very important part so this way if you are working definitely i am telling you you can do a miracle and i am i am telling you our students are all very intelligent only thing is you, they you should motivate them you give proper training they will do all the thing and lot of outsourcing is there even i have seen see even gcms analysis lcms analysis nmr fti yeah all they are doing students from from their packet and another important part is those students they are getting net jrf they are getting 55000 rupees yes they can spend on their own so that is not uh, the criteria thing is you have to have a plan please understand my point because i know you don't have any facility yes i agree but how to improve your infrastructure facility management cannot give <laughs> normally we are giving lot of pressure to the management you give you give where from they will give it is not possible you should arrange through several resources that way only you can do this kind of meta genomics or meta transcriptomics or ngs data everything you can do uh, sir to analyze ngs data apart from galaxy open source free software what other free open source softwares are available see you you please type this thing in google you will get one wikipedia you will get all the sources yes that is number 
and another important part is you go to pubmed p u b m e d pubmed yes in that thing keywords are there there you type it several papers it will come you check several literature there what kind of tools they have used see another important part is whenever you start this kind of research we don't know anything then how to go about that we have to get one good paper in that paper what they have followed what kind of software they have used whether is it possible to do from our end first you have to decide that thing that's all then you start your work then automatically in course of time you know many things see that uh, uh, dr p valentina yeah you you are using galaxy very good galaxy yes. is a very good uh, source but apart from that if you want to do certain classical analysis then you have to go for uh, so many uh, softwares are there but uh, here a very important part is you should uh, be uh, familiar with r language and c++ and uh, python is python c++ and r language you are very good because if you go to r language all the things are there you no need to do anything only you have to learn r language the package everything is there that's right according to your type of research it may change yes uh, thank you sir thank you so much okay any other uh, question yes and uh, someone they are asking my email id my email id is gurus uh, 64 at the red uh, yahoo.com this is my email id any time you can call and uh, yes i am ready to help you because uh, yes because i know what kind of difficulty i faced so that is why yes any any one can do but only thing is your interest that is very very important part and you are your uh, strength is your student so utilize your students in a better way whether it is a ug or pg that is not the matter because nowadays as per that new education policy your ug program is now 4 years 4 years and 1 uh, year they have to do dissertation work so part time scholar will apply for women scientist yes this part time uh, this thing that is not there are you a scholar I, I, are you attached with any department because your hod and guide mentor should certify that's all yes then it is there then you can apply for these things that is not a big thing email id i have already given guru64 directyahoo.com yes uh, i am a scholar and i learned a lot about uh, what is your view about de novo see de novo sequencing <laughs> i don't know anything uh, that is de novo yes i don't know anything how to start yes that is de novo sequencing yes because in your field no one has done so you are going to do that thing first so that is known as de novo sequencing yes uh, very clear thank you sir yes any other thing it is there yes you can ask otherwise my email id is there you can ask at any time because this is totally depending upon your interest that is very very important thing and that's why i told you have to come out from your comfort zone because i want my comfortness means you can't do any kind of research you have to shed your blood just today i am talking here yes my whole lifetime i shed my blood <laughs> i don't know what is bioinformatics i don't know what is metagenomics meta trans i don't know even yes what is the spelling of metagenomics see what is metagenomics for that i spent around 6 months what is the clear cut explanation for metagenomics yes to find out that thing it took 6 months time for me yes whenever you ask any expert they may not help you yes you have to overcome all these things that's why that's why i, I write word you, you have to shed your blood then only you can do something sir uh, yes a uh, very clear explanation yes may i ask anuj yeah please sir am i audible yes yes audible yeah 
thank you so much sir for such an enlightening talk actually i have a question that uh, you are uh, talking about so many sequencing platforms and all and the, so you know, like a nanopore and mini sequencing and all that so is it uh, different on the basis of specificity something like that or the utility so i want to know about that you see a very important part uh, say suppose say what is our main objective i have to publish my paper in high impact factor journal yes suppose if i want to publish my paper in high impact factor journal latest technology i have to follow suppose i told nanopore sequencing yes because see one time that md came to my mizoram university and given one hour lecture that's all then immediately what i did i proposed one plan to serd nanopore sequencing of long horn beetles yes there i have added barcoding also then i got it so with the help of the student yes i did nanopore sequencing in field itself that's why because for sequencing you have to send uh, that sample to the uh, some other uh, outsourcing you have to do but uh, here we did our survey and uh, yes successful way we have completed that project so that's why what is your aim and what is your budget accordingly you have to select any any platform you can select that is not a big thing because outsourcing fellows yes whatever latest technology they are having yes only thing is cost and how much read do you want because cost is totally suppose if i am telling uh, 25000 rupees for transcriptome yes my read is only 6 gb that's all they will ask whether you want 4 gb or 6 gb are more than that 8 gb so accordingly your cost may go high so but you can use any type of platform that is why if you are new to this field first collect review of literature yes good paper e- easily understandable yes from that is it possible from your end yes once you is convinced yes you propose this thing to your student then you do it because initially you may find some difficulties but later you may Yeah, because yeah, because lot of perspiration may come, inspiration will not come. Ninety-nine percent the perspiration only will come. You may get a lot of yes, depression. This thing, that thing, you have to get. So you have to overcome all these things. Then finally you will get success. I am telling you. This is my uh, experience. That's why I would like to share with you. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, thank you so much, and sir, thanks a lot for such an informative lecture. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay. Any other uh, uh, query? If uh, there is no query, yes. Now we can uh, wind up this session. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks for your uh, wonderful, wonderful lecture. And uh, all the participants were very actively involved. in the discussion also that is a, that is the best part of any lecture whatever you deliver it should reach the people and uh, the people also should uh, take into it what uh, take away message what you have uh, uh, delivered so that is uh, that has been uh, done uh, correct perfectly i think because everybody was uh, had their own queries and who and their own doubts which they cleared with you and you have also motivated us to take up this part of uh, research yes sir that is very very important sir thank you so much sir for your words of uh, uh, inspiration and motivation also and your informative lecture thank you so much for sparing your time with us and my sir how yes already i typed one minute one more time i have given guru64 at the rate yahoo.com okay yes sir no yeah please note down that uh, thing yes sir yes sir we'll also share it with them sir to the participants so if they want any if have any doubts they can talk to you directly sir. so how is your stride program going on sir how is your stride program going on sir stride you just stride because see we initially we conducted uh, so many that uh, kind of training for 7 okay. days 7 days 15 days 21 days like that we conducted so and after that review meeting Uh, one uh, reviewer they told uh, what is the outcome of this program then i asked sir how to make uh, the outcome of this program 
see you have you should train the student and you have to get a good publications then that is the outcome of this program so that is why now around 15 uh, uh, students they are working on different different aspects so within this year yeah, we may publish 15 papers that is our target so that way yes now we are working on that ugc stride program okay sir okay fine sir okay bye bye thank you sir thank you